Hey guys, what's going on today? So today's video is a new Mythbuster video on the Semilpoa species as I promised. So before we get on to the Mythbuster video, uh, we got some unfinished business to do. So, uh, start off with shoutouts because I have two shoutouts that I, people ask me to do. So uh, this guy right here, uh, sexy rival, sexy ex-rival, yeah, I believe it's Black Ops that he likes. I'm not a big fan of first-person shooters, let alone games like this. Uh, but he's trying to get one particular video, which is this one, to 10,000 hits. So um, if you like his video, subscribe to him. And then also another one that's uh, related to my channel uh, is this guy right here, uh, John85. I was born in 82, so it's three years uh, apart. So USNDC05. Yeah, and he's got a lot of tea videos, so uh, subscribe to him if you like his videos. Okay, so now, uh, new stuff now. That are not shoutouts. Okay, so I'm on arachnoboards here. Uh, this is usually where I buy tarantulas in case, uh, you know, like Tarantula Canada doesn't have the species I'm looking for. So I'm here going on to for sale and trade, want to buy sections, and I came across this species right here. Hapopalma abostriadon, young female. Well, <laughs> I kind of have a soft spot for this particular species since I have always wanted it and it looks so beautiful compared to um, the Hapopalma lividum. And unfortunately, so I asked him if it was available and he sent me a PM and it's sold. So whenever uh, he's ready to ship it, I'm going to do a review on it and can't wait, that's gonna be awesome. All right, so now let's go on to the Mythbuster video. But first, going on back to the computer again. Uh, these are Platnik's descriptions of all the Samapoas species. So out of this, how many there are? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's about a dozen. Roughly around five of them are available. Uh, the Cambridge of course. Uh, the Erminia, which is the very popular one, uh, Poker, Reduncus is not so common, and the one that's very starting to surface now is uh, this one right here, the Langan Buchuri. Now this specimen is very rare in collections. Uh, when I went to Tarantula Canada to pick up the uh, three specimens, you know, the H. Minax, uh, the C. Shoidi, and the L. Megatheloides, I actually did come across the specimen that they have in their collection and they have actually bred the species but unfortunately only two of them actually hatched out in the egg sac so unfortunately so that's not good for them so they are of course not for sale so gotta put that one on my wish list for this year hopefully you'll get one all right so this video is going to be covering all the Samopoa species that are commonly called available so get started. Okay, so we have PC, PI, PP, and PR. So those are the abbreviations of the Latin names. So the Trinidad Chevron describes the Samopoas Camerjai. The PI is the Venezuelan Sun Tiger. Then the P Polker is called the Panama Blonde. And the PR is the Costa Rican Orange Mouth species. This one is kind of rare in collections. Alright, the Latin names are as follows. Samopoas Cambridgei, Erminia, Pulker, and Reduncus. Now for the pronunciation, it's sort of different than what people uh, wish to express it. Some people like to call it Samopias, where the O is silent. Oh, right here, the O is silent here. And people like myself like to call it Samopoas. Um, but yeah, it's just your your taste of uh, what you want. So the psalm right here, the psalm here, that's the Bible. Poes or pius cambridgei erminia pulcher, not pulcher, and reduncus. So pretty easy to figure out. So yes, I did describe that uh, P. Langan Bruchuri and P. Maya is it is does exist in the collections. I don't really see them much in US and Canada. Hopefully we'll get some. 
All right, so the cost and the availability and yeah, online dealers is the main source of place where you can buy them. Um, it's very rarely that you'll see them in pet stores. So Turnat Chevron's uh, slings are pretty cheap uh, in Canada. Uh, half an inch usually goes from about ten to twenty dollars. Adult females will probably run you to slightly under a hundred dollars. Uh, Venezuelan Sun Tigers are slightly more expensive, but not by much. Uh, slings go for twenty-five dollars as a half an inch. An inch and a half will probably run you to 50 and probably like a four inch female will probably run you into 80 to 90 dollars so it's still under the hundred dollar mark Panama blonde is pretty much similarly priced to the Sun Tiger and as you expect the Reduncus the Costa Rican origin mouth it's slightly more expensive to get and harder to come by I remember I paid for my specimen uh, that was Dave unfortunately he grew into a mature male I loaned this one to Tarantula Canada so quite a while ago, so we're still waiting on an update of whether or not that female actually did lay exact, so I'm thinking that never happened. So those specimens typically go for around $35 to $40 as a half an inch. Then again, you know, like some of them might be cheaper depending on the dealer. Okay, now about the sizes, the mature females, the males, the lifespan, and the growth rate. Well, the sum of post growth rate are... I would say medium fast growth rate. They're not as quick growing as the pokies. Um, my Erminia is now four years old. I remember getting her in 2007 as a half an inch spiraling and she's roughly around four and a half inches. So the lifespan of females range from 12 to 15 years, males three to four. Now mature males and mature females are pretty easy distinguished as with pokies males are much more drabbier colored than the females. So without further ado, let's have a look at the specimens. Okay, so this one here you may not be able to see, but this is my Samopos Pulker. Uh, this is the Panama Blonde. As you can see where it, it gets its name by the blonde colors on their legs. It's all blonde all over. Um, their abdomen has a two-tone color. The lower half near the spinnerets are a shade of black whereas the front end of the abdomen has more of a beige color to it. Uh, you've probably seen my specimen earlier in one of the detailed vi feeding videos and another video I posted up not too long ago about this uh, spider so you can be able to appreciate the size of it and the um, appearance. Well, these ones grew up to having a five and a half to six inch leg span. It's one of the more smaller of the group. So I'll give you a quick look at what they look like. Going on to Tarantula Canada's website. Moving on to the Samapo species. So Pulker female. Yeah, you can see like near the abdomen, near, near the spinnerets, you have like a little two-tone black and here you have all beige colored so it's not really very popular tarantula because it's not very colorful to some people but I think it's a really beautiful species so temperament of these species are pretty nasty tempered so you probably have seen many times my Rosalina goes into threat posture so mature males poker yeah so you can tell right away they look drabby colored uh, I believe they don't possess tibial hooks on the specimens, but they do have bulbous pedipalps. And a sling looks exactly like this. Right over here. So you can see the blonde colors, they still have them as juveniles as slings. Uh, these species are a bit harder to take care of, so uh, they're kind of fragile like Avix, so you might want to increase the ventilation and increase your humidity. I think that's how my four or five of them died. Okay, now Reduncus, um, again, it's a small growing species, similar leg span to the uh, P. Pulker, so spiraling looks exactly like this. Characteristic gr metallic green abdomen, males as you would expect, they're uh, drabier colored, and the females are like this, so I never actually had a female before, but 
I must say it's a nice looking Samapoa species. Okay, now the Langan Buchuri sling, as I saw these uh, that they had. That's what they look like as slings and as mature females. They look like that. Kind of looks like a uh, P camera dry, if you ask me. Okay, so this one here is a Samopoas Urmenia, Venice 1 Sun Tiger. This is a 4 inch uh, female. As you can see, why they call it the Tiger Rump? Because of the uh, shape of the abdomen, its colors. It's a beautiful species that is all black with a green carapace as a freshly molted specimen. And they have a lot of orange highlights around them. So they call it the Nike spider because the orange stripes resembles the Nike stripes. So again, mature males are much more, um, less colored. So I'll show you what they look like as the males. Yeah, they kind of look like that. All right, and now for the final one that I have is uh, P. Camera Dry. So this right here is Cory, the mature male, as you could expect. No surprise here. Oh, can't really see it, but you can see he's very brown colored. Uh, there he is, right over here. He's going to be bred soon with the female. So I'm thinking that's the sperm web. And now let's go have a look at the female. Oh yeah, I forgot about the size about the Erminia. The Erminias really grow up to six inch leg span as the maximum size. So it's pretty good size. P. Camerdry happens to be the largest of the genus. Uh, they can attain at least a seven to eight inch leg span, typical, similar to a pokey. So this is what a female looks like. Very underrated in the hobby, but you can see it's a very beautiful specimen. Uh, the camera is really not picking up the colors well, but you can see the specimen is freshly molted. It's got a moss green color to them, and you could definitely tell the red on their feet. It was just absolutely beautiful. So this one I'm going to be mating very soon, so hopefully all goes well. Okay, now for the enclosure setups. So, pretty much as slings, they do tend to show burrowing tendencies. So, uh, what I would do is keep it in a container similar to this pill jar, except I would probably fill uh, the substrate about to here, and uh, they will build elaborate tunnels. Especially, this is true for P. Armenia, since mine actually did that. So, as I said, in later juveniles, like the two and a half inch mark, um, deli tall deli containers such as this one here is perfect for one. And then you could move to one gallon jars that you can buy from Walmart, like around four to five dollars. It'd be good for like uh, three to four inch specimens. And then for an adult, uh, they're okay in Critter keepers like this, as you see, by the uh, Ferneri, uh, this is the Crabworks variety. Or you can spend a little bit more, but you can get a lot more space with a uh, Fenarium by Hagen. These are the larger ones. But you can also if house them in five gallon uh, glass tanks mounted on the side. So I wouldn't go over 10 gallons because uh, they're relatively a small species. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So the care sheet, is core, as far as uh, humidity and temperature goes, uh, like I said, uh, I keep going on about this uh, temperature, I keep it 80 to 82 degrees in the daytime, then drop it down to 77 at night with the help of my space heater. Uh, so that's pretty good. Uh, humidity, you probably want to keep it around 80% for most of them, and they'll uh, thrive well. These are very easy to take care of, so it's a good species to own. So now about their venom and their temperament. Well, as you'd expect, some poets are not very <laughs> friendly teas. Most of them are kind of aggressive as far as the 
Erminia and the Poker is concerned. I had a Reduncus that was actually pretty mean. Uh, the Cambridge Eye seems to be the more mellow of the Silent Poets. Some of them can actually be handled, but I don't risk handling mine because um, mine tends to be somewhat moody at times, so best not to handle them too much. So these are New World Arboreals, as you would expect. They come from West Indies to uh, the Panama. So like I said, uh, Poker comes from Panama. Camera Dry comes from Trinidad and Tobago, and Irminia comes from Venezuela, and of course, Reduncus comes from Costa Rica. So, there are no world species, but why are they so venomous? So, they behave more like old worlds in the fact that they rely more on their biting strength than throwing or decaying hair because they don't have any. Okay, so breeding, um, there's not really much information that I read on arachnivores. But people have mixed reviews on these. Um, the, apparently what Amanda from Tarantula Canada tells me that these are pretty difficult species, rather difficult ones to breed because of the female's aggression towards the male, even if you feed her very well. So unfortunately for me, I have not experienced yet, but I will soon with those P. Cambridge And the egg sacs are probably not the greatest. Uh, they can get maybe 20 to about... 200 eggs. Some of them, like Pyraminia, as you saw in Tarantula Guy 1976 videos, can double clutch. So what double clutch means is that they can lay a sack and you can pull them out and if they're still fertile, she can make another one so they can have two egg sacs. So hopefully mine will double clutch so that would be a really cool experience to have that. Now overall recommendations. So these are meant for the intermediates. Yeah, yeah, intermediates. Yeah, I'm not don't really recommend them for beginners. So these species are a great step up from the Vicularia genus if you still want to venture into the arboreals. If uh, you want my personal advice, I would start off with a Cambridge first, since they're much more calmer than Erminia and Pulker. Uh, but if you buy the Erminia and Pulker, you're pretty much set for a Pocotheria species which is the pokies, the pyragallus, the pyranata, and uh, so forth because they behave exactly like pokies. I did forget to mention that they're very quick and they're very skittish but they can also be very defensive with their corner just like the pokies minus the potent venom that they have. They're not as potent as the pokies but they're a great way to uh, try to learn about them. So I think this covers it. Hope you guys enjoyed this awesome Mythbuster video and stay tuned for more videos to come.